You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. changing your life with fibromyalgia this is lives changed with your host deborah lundquist through knowledge and prayer deb has learned to live with this difficult and often misdiagnosed disease get spiritual and good practical advice for achieving good health and acceptance while living with fibromyalgia so now please welcome the host of lives changed deborah lundquist I'm Deb Lundquist, your host, and you're listening to BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. In 1999, I had a horrible accident in which I was told I should have died, but God had other plans. I acquired RSD, CRPS, which is reflex discipline. Reflex sympathetic dystrophy, which is the worst pain known to man. And when the doctors put that to sleep, we discovered I also had fibromyalgia as well as several other pain and autoimmune diseases. To learn more about myself, to learn more about me, sorry, I'm doing it again. You can look on the bio on the Lives Changed page on the BBM Global Network. And that is on the page that you are on now if you're listening to the show. All of our shows are saved there as well. And you can listen from my very first show to all of my shows. I do, not, I do need to say I'm not a doctor or in the medical field at all. I will not diagnose, suggest you start or stop any medications. I like our audience participation, so please grab a pen and paper and write things down if you find them of interest. If you have any questions, please write those down too, and then you can email me at liveschangedradio at gmail.com. And you can call while the show is live at 866-451-1451. And the show is live right now. So the number is 866-451-1451. You'll also find that number on the top of the page on the right top portion of the page. And you can get your questions answered while it's live if time allows. Also, let me give you some other addresses where you can reach me. On Facebook, I have a support page called Your, that's Y-O-U-R, Fibromyalgia. And I have a web page called DebLundquist.com, where I just created a fibromyalgia quiz that you can take. And if you have doubters or non-believers, you can have them take that quiz and they might learn a little bit about fibromyalgia. You can also call me personally at 815-214-9443. Again, that is 815-214-9443. If I don't answer, please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as you can. And if you have comments, please put them down below. Just scroll down. And there is a section for you to put comments on about the show. There is a comment on there right now that I have not been able to answer. I will answer it as soon as I am able. Anyway, here we go. The first thing I always like to do at the beginning of every show is repeat affirmations out loud. 
And that means I want you to repeat them out loud too. And this is something I do every single day because I need to do it. And I feel it's very important for you to do it as well. Um, my psychologist had me start doing this. And uh, as I was talking to the doctor that I'm going to have on October 23rd, she loved this and she thinks she wrote them all down and she thinks they're very important too. She really liked this. So I would like you to write them all down so that you can do them during the week as well instead of just during the radio show. So here we go. Are you ready? Now say them out loud. I am not alone. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am needed. I still have a purpose. I am important. And the new one, I love myself. We're going to do it again. I am not alone. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am needed. I still have a purpose. I am important. I love myself. Now, when I'm saying that, I'm not saying that to me. Those are what you're supposed to be saying. Okay? I say those to myself. You're supposed to be saying those to yourself. <clears throat> okay. Last week, right after the show, as soon as we got done, I had the most lovely conversation with a fellow fibromyalgia sufferer. It was wonderful. I love talking to you guys. Two days later, I had a stellate ganglion block for my right arm. I would like to report that it worked completely, but it didn't. It did help my shoulder and the most of my arm, but it, and it did help my neck, although he wasn't sure it would. Um, but my original injury spot two days later came back. Now, what that probably means is that that area of my RSD has now changed to the point where my brain is originating the pain for that part of my body, which isn't good, instead of that part of my body originating the pain. So what that means is that I have to redevelop my coping skills. Now, once you don't need your coping skills, they go away. So... Once you need them again, you have to redevelop them. And that is what I'm in the process of doing. So what Bob did is what he discovered in the very beginning is that I need to put a compression sleeve on that part of my arm. So he went down to Dick's Sporting Goods and he bought a knit compression arm sleeve that the athletes wear and brought it home. And uh, I've talked to the group about this, but I haven't talked to you. And I put it on. It over sensitizes that area. So in essence, it desensitizes it because then the brain gets very confused because it over sensitizes it and the brain gets confused and it stops the pain. So I did that before a long time ago when the RSD first raised its ugly head and it helps every single time. However, every time I move my fingers, my pain is exasperated. And so every time I hold the mouse with my right pain, with my right hand, the pain is exasperated, and every time I move my fingers, especially my middle finger, uh, the pain hurts. So anyway, 
I may have to learn how to reuse my left hand as my main hand. So this is Deb Lundquist, your host, and you're listening to Lives Changed. And we'll continue this when we come back. So don't go away. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to Lives Changed. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host, and we're talking about what my week was like. So the week was spent working on the webpage, deblundquist.com, writing articles for the support group and talking to people on the support group, finding articles of interest to put on the support group, and talking to people on the phone. And like I said, I really love that. Bob has finished the dining room and I found a paint color that just matches exactly the color of the light that the sun makes the drywall when it comes in it's a real pretty light uh, peach so I'm really excited about that then he hung the light I bought with my own money when I turned 16 my very first purchase I ever ever spent when I earned money My parents thought I was going to buy a sewing machine, but I bought a light and shocked them. So it looks like an antique, and I guess it's 50-some years old, so it probably is considered one. (laughs) All he has to do now is trim the windows. Last week, we talked about learning to love yourself, seven things you should stop expecting from others, and hair loss. So before we get started this week... I'd like to again say a word to the hurricane victims down in Texas, Florica, Florica, <laughs> I'm really doing bad today, Florida, and now Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the other li- islands that have now been completely devastated from the hurricanes. I, for one, have never known anything like what you, you're experiencing as far as physical loss and going through going without beloved personal possession, possessions and and the loss of loved ones but i know how bad you're suffering from pain and on top of that all the stress you're under from the circumstances you're currently living in we are all concerned about you so if you can try to remember to go to your happy place a place where you were at your very happiest Take yourself to that place and stay there as long as you can in your mind. Tell yourself stories about that time and during that period that you were your very happiest. And hopefully your pain will ease, your stress will lessen. Keep going there as often as you need. 
take Epsom salt baths if you can and try to relax. And if you don't have a tub, then get something that you can soak your feet in with the Epsom salts. If you feel that you're starting to wind up, stop what you're doing, sit down, drink some tea, start doing some relaxing exercises, go to your happy place, de-stress. I don't know, you know, if you have any electricity yet, so then you can't hear us. But anyway, please know we're thinking of you and we're praying for you. Now, here are some suggestions of what to say to people when they say hurtful things to us. So if they say to you, you don't look sick, just look at them and say, well, thank you for the compliment. You don't have any idea how hard it is for me to appear this way. Or you could say, thank you. You have no idea how hard it was for me to get out of the house today. If they say, you're lazy, you could say, you have any idea how rude and ignorant you really are at this moment? When you are ready to discuss what's wrong with me, then we can talk. And then you walk away without tears. You don't want them to see that they hurt you. If they say, you don't want to get better, I know I've heard that, then you say, again, without tears, without yelling, in a soft voice, you have no idea of what you're talking about. No one would ever want to live the way I am living or survive with what I am suffering. You will never know, understand, because even I don't understand. Every day it seems there is something new, but this is a real disease and I am not alone. It's time for you to try to understand. If they say, why aren't you working? Then you say, without yelling or crying, why aren't you listening? If I ignored what you say, you would get very angry with me and wouldn't understand why I wouldn't listen to you. So when you're ready to listen to what I'm saying, then we can have that discussion. Until then, this discussion is over because I will not continue to have a discussion with a brick wall that has stuffed ears. Then walk away, do not cry until they can't see you anymore. If they say, why don't you clean the house? You say, the same reason I'm not working. If they say, why don't you cook anymore? You say, the same reason I'm not working. If they say, why are you crying? You say, are you ready to listen yet? What, if, what do you say to a partner who doesn't believe that you're sick? Start reading the support group with me. If that partner says no, then you say, do you respect me? Do you love me? Then it is time to start standing up for myself. I need you to do this for me. I need you to be in this with me because this is something I don't want to do alone. If that partner still says no, then tell that partner there is no option. Communication is the key with this disease. And that partner is not being part of the communication in this relationship, and they need to be. There are reasons people don't believe in fibromyalgia. For one thing, it is invisible, and people can really only see it if they look in your eyes, because that's where you see pain. So ask people to look you in your eyes. As for doctors, well, here's the truth. They are not taught about fibromyalgia in medical school. They, if they hear anything about RSD or fibromyalgia, it's in the form of chronic pain 
and then it's only a mention. This is Deb Lundquist. You're listening to Lives Changed, and we'll get into this more when we come back. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back to Lives Changed. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host. And we are talking about recognizing chronic pain, fibromyalgia, RSD, and why doctors um, know so little about it. So like I said, doctors are not taught about it in medical school. If they hear anything about RSD or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome, any of those things, it's in the form of chronic pain. And then it's only a mention, just like a blip. And so chronic pain itself is only covered in about four hours in medical school. Now, that's hardly enough to really cover anything. So the only thing that they actually will learn about it is if they specialize in chronic pain in the residency. And then only if they they super specialize in RSD and fibromyalgia. And then their education will depend on where the residency took place. So they still might not understand anything about fibromyalgia or RSD. So another thing about people not wanting to hear about it is that the combination of symptoms sound out of this world. They just don't go together if you think about it, right? With RSD, I always thought that people didn't want to hear how you could get it. And and with RSD, they know how you get it. Well, people don't want to hear that because it means it's just too close to home when they realize that they can get it too. And they don't want to hear that. It's just too frightening, right? Because, I mean, you could get it from a paper cup with RSD. You could get it from a shot. There was a little girl that got it because her finger got frozen on the freezer section at the grocery store. So that's pretty frightening, right? Considering that the medical community 
doesn't know what fibromyalgia is or how exactly you get it, how to truly treat it, that there is no cure, can you blame people for not wanting to sit and listen to the litany of what is going on when you don't really understand what's going on? And you've got doctors that are telling you that there isn't anything really wrong with you. We are going to have to change that because that isn't fair to you or me for that matter, right? And I've always believed in fairness. After all, I'm a Libra. So let's get up some conversational points for everyone to discuss so that we can try to make people understand exactly what we live with in terms that they can feel themselves. We want them to be able to feel what we feel. So here we go. Number one, the worst flu they have ever experienced without constant vomiting, but often experiencing nausea, sometimes experiencing diarrhea, but also experiencing constipation that has lasted more than three months. So far, I've had it 18 years plus. The pain is constant and is the worst pain you have ever fought, felt, worse than kidney stones or childbirth. And it's all over your body, sometimes including your hair. Then you ask them, could you live with this? Right? But that isn't all. Complete and total exhaustion to the point that you feel like your legs can't hold you. If you start to stand up because of you can't, you can't stand up because of your exhaustion. You feel like you're going to faint. And yet, as soon as your head hits the pillow, you have complete and total insomnia. If your body does allow you to take a two to three hour nap, you wake up more exhausted than when you lay down because you never get into the deep REM restorative sleep. Could they work with this? But that's not all, right? And don't forget the brain fog, the memory loss. <laughs> did, you, did you get my play on words there? Don't forget the memory loss. <laughs> I'm so funny. Anyway. Migraines to the point where light and sounds, even smells, might make you start vomiting and race for the throne at the same time. Now, could they work with all three of these symptoms going on at the same time? Just ask them. Could they? Next, sensitivity to touch, light, sound, smell, taste. All of your senses are heightened. But that isn't all right? Then there's a horrible feeling like you are, you have bugs crawling on you. Of course, they're invisible too, so they can't see them, right? But that isn't all. Then there's the absolutely awful itching that almost nothing helps. And you might wake up and find that you have scratched while sleeping until you're bleeding. And sometimes that itching is even in your privates. But that isn't all. Depression so deep that some people go off the deep end and never see the next sunshine. Again, but that's not all. Your immune system is compromised. And so you are susceptible to catching anything that walks by you. So you have to be very careful. You have to change your diet to fix your intestines so you don't end up with leaky gut. You don't want to get candida, which you're now susceptible to. You're likely to get celiac disease and other autoimmune diseases. And that's not all either, is it? I'm Deb Lundquist, your host. You're listening to BBM Global Network. And when we come back, we're going to talk about number nine. So don't go away. 
For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back to Lives Changed. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host, and we're talking about number nine. Speaking of celiac disease, you probably have an autoimmune disease by now. And once you get one autoimmune disease, chances are you'll get more. And then if a weather system comes through, everything is worse. And then If the seasons change, everything is worse. And if you have strong winds, everything is worse. And there is more, of course. This is why it is so important for the people near you and dear to you need to understand what fibromyalgia is. Once we stop talking about the first six symptoms of fibromyalgia, we start talking about deeper issues that true that they truly need to understand. You won't be creating new symptoms. You might be developing new issues. You're not making them up. You're just developing new issues. These are just the facts. I'm not trying to scare you or the people that love you. Does fibromyalgia get worse as it ages? Well, the truth is, right now, fibromyalgia is not listed by most people, most authorities, as an autoimmune disease. But it is attracted by them. If you develop fibromyalgia, chances are that eventually, if not before, you will develop autoimmune diseases. And once you do, more will develop. Those are just what it is. Those are what will progress and make it seem like fibromyalgia is progressing. As you age, you're going to develop aches and pains. That is just part of the aging process. Those aches and pains are normal and not necessarily part of fibromyalgia. Don't blame everything on fibromyalgia. Don't blame every headache on fibromyalgia. For instance, a sinus headache is just a sinus headache and should be dealt with as such. Don't let fibromyalgia freeze you and stop you from living. If you do that, you'll have a higher chance of getting worse. No matter what, moving is the best thing you can do for yourself. Loving yourself keeping a positive attitude, 
good nutrition, getting regular blood tests and doctor visits, and keeping a watch on yourself and listening to your body should allow you and your partner to lead a wonderful and satisfying life together. Now, I know some of you have stopped going to the doctor, stopped getting blood tests, but you need to change that. For those who have loved ones with fibromyalgia who are confused about the disease and don't know what to do and don't want to talk about it, this is for you. I'm going to talk personally to you one-on-one. I am somewhat of an authority on this disease as I have had it for more than 18 years now. In my previous life, I was a researcher, as was my husband. Together, we have researched this disease ad nauseum. And we feel we know it well. And I do mean disease. That's what I call it. I have written several articles about it since it has been my husband and my roommate all these many years, and we feel we know it quite well. My husband has created some unique ways of dealing with it, and we even had to reteach me how to dress in the beginning because I could not use my right arm. He had to teach me how to pull up my pants with one hand, how to zip a zipper with one hand, how to button blouses with my left hand, At that time, I had reflex sympathetic dystrophy, RSD, the worst pain known to man, on top of the fibromyalgia, and so I didn't feel the fibromyalgia, but I had it. Some of the medications that I took for the RSD were the same for the fibromyalgia, so at least it was being treated, but it was making the RSD worse than it should have been. Many of the symptoms are the same. All of the symptoms are just as confusing. My husband's suggestion, his only suggestion to you is this. Listen, listen, listen to everything. Listen to everything they say because only they know how they feel. And he said, I know some of the things they say sound outlandish, like the bugs crawling on them. But when I saw the bumps on her arm and her trying to brush them off, and she told me what she was doing, I believed her. She's overly honest. And I am. Every personality test they've given to me, they say you're almost dangerously honest. I don't know how being too honest can be dangerous, but maybe it is. He says, listen to everything they don't say. They don't tell you everything because they don't think you will believe them. She started scratching everywhere, from her head to her feet and everywhere in between. I looked at her scalp and it was raw. He says, listen, listen when they sleep, or rather don't sleep well. Her arms would fly up in the air and stay there. And I would gently put them back down, and up they would go again. Then one night, she completely threw herself off the bed and hurt herself. She had developed REM sleep disorder. Thank God she had sleep apnea, or she would have broken her nose. Instead, she only broke her nose piece in two. She said in her sleep as she laid on the floor, damn chicken, Watch, he says. Yes, he got to the point of watching where he had to help me talk. I could not talk and I would be talking and all of a sudden the word I wanted would completely slip away. And I would look at him helplessly and he always knew what word I wanted. I really don't know how he did, but he did. He watched me constantly. When I was talking to people, he was always there. If he wasn't, our daughter would be. 
and she would support me the same way. It was brain fog. When the doctor put the RSD to sleep for a while, we started dealing with the fibromyalgia. We were still dealing with many of the same issues. I was still doing therapy, and my right arm has never and will never be what it once was. I lost so much muscle. It was just wasted away, atrophy and dystrophy. So my husband has to do all of the cooking. I can't pick up a pan because it's too heavy, let alone stand by the heat of the stove or the oven. Give me a hot plate and I will drop it every time. This is Deb Lundquist and you're listening to Lives Changed. Now when we come back, I will continue on, so don't go away. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Lives Changed. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host. And we are talking about why we need our loved ones in our lives with fibromyalgia. So my husband has to do all the cooking. I can't pick up a pan because it's too heavy, let alone stand by the stove or the oven because of the heat. Give me a hot plate and I'll drop it every time. I try to help with the laundry, but I can't do much. A heavy load will not only get my back going. At one time, I had five bulging discs, but my right arm will drop it. Folding laundry will cause pain in my right arm to increase to the point I have to stop. So my husband said, forget it, because I would force it until I cried. I can't clean the house because of my back. So I felt useless, completely a drag on my husband, completely guilty and constantly told him he would be better off if he just left me for someone that could do things with him. This is until he got mad. Stop it, he said. I love you and I don't want another woman. You're going back to the psychologist. And I did. You see, that's what we need from you. Love. We need to know that even though we can't do what we used to do, even though we can't be the housemaker we used to be, you still love us and you want to be with us. We need you to make us make an effort to get out of bed and get dressed. We need you to help us take a shower because it's hard as hell for us to do it. It's absolutely exhausting 
And I used to need him in there to hold me up. And then he bought a chair. He still had to give me a shower. And then as I got stronger, I could do it, most of it. But he still had to help me with my hair. Then I was worn out for the rest of the day. until. But that was in the beginning. I had a purpose. He was helping me to have a purpose. It wasn't easy. He didn't push hard, but he did gently push. See, the RSD had me bedbound for four and a half years. I was almost in an electric wheelchair when the doctor put it to sleep. We were headed to Minnesota. The pain was unrelenting, plus I had complex chronic migraine. And I could hardly move. I was so sick. We got halfway to my brother's house. He lived in Minnesota. And halfway was Madison, Wisconsin. And we stopped for lunch. My husband tried to get me out of the car, but I couldn't. My legs wouldn't work. They wouldn't support me. I started crying. I couldn't stand. I sat on the floorboard of the car and cried. He told me to stop it. I was only going to make my migraine worse. He left for a minute, and I don't remember anything from the next 10 minutes. I was just blinded by pain. But then, after that, I could stand as long as I had my cane and his arm. And we went in and ate. Then I got back in the car, laid back down, and went to sleep. When we got to my brother's, the migraine was gone. It was the night before my nephew's wedding, and we went to the rehearsal dinner. I couldn't believe I could go. The next morning, I hopped out of bed. Yes, I said hopped, and started moving around like a little energizer bunny. My husband looked at me funny, and I said, what? And he said, never mind. You'll figure it out. Then I said, something's wrong. I know it, but I don't have time to figure it out. I got ready to go to the wedding, and then I went down the stairs. Got my own breakfast, which I never did. My brother and sister-in-law looked at me funny, and I said, yes, I know, something's wrong. I don't have time to figure it out what it is. I'll figure it out later. My brother said, sit right here, and I think you'll figure it out right away. So I sat. It hit me right between the eyes. No pain. I was in remission. I was as weak as a kitten, but I had no pain. Every other symptom was gone. I might have been at my nephew's wedding, but I had been given the best present of my life. It lasted seven heavenly years. During that time, I did therapy, a lot of therapy. My husband supported me every step of the way. This is what we need from you. We need your support. We need you to help us figure things out. Whether you're our partner, our parents, siblings, friends, whatever, we need you to help us to stay with us. We need your love and understanding. We need you to listen and watch. We need you to catch us when we fall. We need you to tell us it's time to go to the psychologist before it's too late. We need you to tell us it will be okay when we are in a flare. We need you to go to the store at midnight if we need something without complaint because our pain is out of control or the itching is so bad. Most of all, we just need you, whether or not you understand at first or believe at first in what is happening to our bodies. Because believe me, whether, uh, because believe it or not, We don't understand it either, and we are scared. We are confused, and we need someone to hold on to, and we want that to be you. So let's talk a little bit about autoimmune because I don't think we understand it very well. And unlike other diseases that, have a category uh, autoimmune disease doesn't and it should because there are over a hundred autoimmune diseases in this world and 
they need to be studied as a category. Many of them, well, all of them, have the same symptoms. And they cost more than $100 billion every year. And they affect 50 million Americans, according to the American Autoimmune Related Diseases Association. So, when I come back, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host, and you're listening to Lives Changed. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Lives Changed. I'm your host, Deb Lundquist, and we're going to finish this out talking about autoimmune diseases. An autoimmune disease develops when your immune system, which defends your body against diseases, gets confused and decides that it's going to attack your healthy cells as foreign. As a result, your immune system sets up an attack. More than 75% of autoimmune disease patients are women, of course. And like I said, there's more than 100 autoimmune diseases. Many of them have similar symptoms, which makes them difficult to diagnose. It's also possible to have more than one at the same time which we already know because we get them, right? So autoimmune diseases usually fluctuate between periods of remission and on relieving symptoms because there's no cure. Autoimmune diseases refers to a varied group of illnesses that involve almost every human organ. So that's rather distressing. It also vessels and, like I said, the immune system becomes misdirected and attacks the organs. In addition, the women who have it suffer a lack of focus and scattered research approach. 
For example, I found this very interesting. The autoimmune system is known to have genetic basis and tends to cluster in families as different autoimmune diseases. For instance, a mother might have lupus, her daughter, juvenile diabetes, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, her sister, Graves' disease, and her grandmother, rheumatoid arthritis. So it doesn't have to be the same thing. Next week, I'm going to continue to talk to you about this because it is a very important subject. But for now, I'm going to close the show with thanking you for listening. It's very important to me that you listen because I care about each and every one of you. I hope you come back next week. We are always on on Mondays at 5 o'clock Eastern and 4 o'clock Central and 2 o'clock on Pacific Time. Lives changed on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You can find me also on Facebook on my support group, Your Y-O-U-R. Fibromyalgia and my desk or my webpage, Debs or DebLundquist.com. Again, thank you for joining us today. I'm Deb Lundquist, your host, and you've been listening to Lives Changed. Be strong. You're stronger than you think. Fight on. You're not alone. Talk to you next week. You've been listening to Lives Changed with host Deborah Lundquist. Find out each week how Deb can educate, guide, and help you get through the daily challenges of living with fibromyalgia on Deb Lundquist's Lives Changed. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.